WeWork withdrew its public offering in September of 2019 that looked to value the company at $47 billion, making it the year's hottest IPO. It saw valuations plummet to less than $8 billion on concerns over an erratic management and mounting losses. The firm has since undergone an enormous management shakeup, and its new team has emphasized the focus on putting the wheels of the once promising company back on track amidst a global pandemic. According to its second quarter earnings, we've seen WeWork post a 9% increase in revenue to $882 million. It's halved the burn rate and expects to be cash flow positive by 2021. Enterprise companies now represent 48% of its over 6 lakh memberships and account for more than 50% of WeWork's core revenue for the first time in Q2 of 2020. So while the company is confident of a recovery, the street is not yet convinced. Rating agency Fitch has downgraded the co-working giant's rating regarding its ability to pay long-term debt to Triple C, indicating a substantial credit risk where default is a real possibility. In a scenario where demand is structurally lower, Fitch sees WeWork as potentially requiring additional liquidity sources inclusive of and beyond SoftBank's financing commitment. A better case scenario by Fitch sees WeWork's cash burn rate come in at about $900 million in 2021 and then reduce enough during the next year for the company to enjoy moderately positive free cash flow in 2022. So the question is, how do you sell shared space at a time when people are still hesitant to return to work? And what does the road to profitability look like for WeWork in a post-COVID world? Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan and joining me today for the CNBC TV 18 exclusive are Sandeep Matrani, the CEO of WeWork Global and the man steering one of the company's key markets, Karan Virvani, the CEO of WeWork India. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us on this special show. Sandeep, let me start by asking you about the outlook uh, for WeWork in a post-COVID world. You know, we, we read out a whole bunch of numbers. We put out the outlook that Fitch has put out, which has concerns uh, about a default risk. But let me ask you, given where we find ourselves today with global growth, seeing some signs of stability, some signs of recovery, but once again, a spike in COVID cases across the US and Europe, what's the outlook? So, Shireen, uh, thank you for having me on the show. And let me first sort of focus on uh, the Fitch uh, results. I mean, we can always focus on the the, the, the the facts of what it said was that effectively we are the best position to navigate through COVID. Went on to say that we will not use the $1.1 billion of additional soft bank financing that we secured at the end of the second quarter. Uh, and as you did say, uh, it also says we would be cash flow positive in mm -hmm. 2022. Mm -hmm. So overall, at the, it, was really a, it was really a reflection of the industry, mm -hmm. which includes office, not really a reflection on WeWork mm -hmm. uh, individually. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is, you know, if you look at our balance sheet, you know, we ended uh, the Q2 with, uh, you know, almost $4 billion of liquidity. Very soon, we're going to announce our third quarter results. Uh, and and uh, you will, you will, we will demonstrate Okay, how we end this year, you know, with uh, with substantial liquidity, uh, and actually we don't even intend in 2021 to use the original 2.2 billion dollars of liquidity uh, that SoftBank provided, um, and so so we find ourselves in a fantastically positive uh, uh, financial position. Uh, COVID has had its, uh, you know, the positives and negatives. Mm. Uh, the positives of COVID has been it allowed me to streamline the company. Uh, we've we've cut about 1.6 billion dollars of of of, uh, of SGNA and operational expenses from the company, which allows us uh, to lower the hurdle rate from a revenue perspective to be profitable. Mm. Uh, we've yeah. been able to streamline our real estate portfolio. And more so in the months of June, July, and September, our leasing activity has equated to what it was in March, which is pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is we offer three things. We offer enterprise tenants the ability to de-densify in this, in this COVID environment to provide social distancing, uh, to provide uh, better sanitization and obviously better ventilation. Uh, we allow them to you know, consolidate their businesses because their own needs uh, have now gotten reduced. And thirdly, we are the ideal solution for a hub and spoke model for them. And, and, our, and our key mantra is effectively flexibility, right? So we are an incredibly flexible solution from time, space. You can flex up, flex down. 
uh, extend the contract any period of time. And then lastly, oh. I would say COVID oh. allowed us to come up with a new product called All Access On Demand, where we can now rent space by the hour, by the day, by the week, by the month, uh, allowing people the respite they need uh, from working from home. Okay, uh, that is a, a great context-setting response from you, Sandeep. So let me pick up on each of those things that you've told us uh, one by one. Uh, you know, you, you, I'm quoting you back to you. You said that you're in a fantastic position financially, uh, streamlining your real estate portfolio. You've cut about a billion plus uh, in terms of operating expenses. So uh, this is all part of the transformation strategy that you have decided to take forward. How much of what you have planned uh, as part of that is already done, what is left in terms of divestures, in terms of being able to cut down costs even further? What next should we expect on that front? Okay, so we have actually divested every non-core business that we own, every one. The only one left is We Live. We have two buildings that are apartment buildings, but barring We Live, every other acquisition that was non-core to our business has been sold. Uh, the billion six I told you is all implemented. So on a run rate basis in 2021, that would not be, that cost is done. There's nothing to be done. And on the real estate side, we're about 75% complete in the rationalization of our real estate portfolio. So, you know, we've set the stage, uh, you know, uh, you know for, the, for the path of recovery. We've set the stage for as, as tenants uh, start to come back into our spaces. Uh, and, you know, we will tell you, being a global company, uh, that China is back 100 uh, percent to pre-pandemic levels in every aspect. Mm. South Korea, mm. the same. Singapore, the same. As a matter of fact, before the spike in, in France, uh, France was back 83 you percent. Know, Germany was back 70 plus percent. Mm. Italy was back 70 plus percent. So, you know, this is, a, a, you know, we have to adapt to a behavioral change uh, and, and uh uh, you know, we are starting to see even in New York City, where I'm headquartered, yeah. uh, the traffic increases on a daily basis. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, every institution and business leaders, the banks, uh, you know, have already told their employees to start to return to work. Mm. Uh, and we're starting to see that positive impact. Uh, and as they come to work, as I said, their own premises are not suited for de-densification because mm. they themselves are fairly dense. And we become this automatic solution uh, for de-densification of their premises. So, uh, look, it's a long, it's a, it's going to be a, it's going to be a dog-dog fight, but uh, we're up for it. For the yes, challenge. I can see that you, you certainly are up for it. Uh, uh, and I will get to the de-densification and the flexibility that you're hoping to capitalize on in, in a second and, and get current to weigh in on that as well. But, you know, since you talked about China uh, and you said that you're back to pre-COVID levels as far as China is concerned, uh, why is it that you're selling control of the China division to one of your investors, uh, uh, Trustbridge Partners? Uh, you know, why that decision? Well, we, we sold down our interest uh, from 60 percent to circa 17, 18 percent, uh, you know, to get to a path to profitability. It requires about a hundred million dollar investment. Mm. Uh, we thought our capital was better spent, quite honestly, uh, in investing in India, uh, which we, you know, you know, gave uh, we work India a hundred million dollars. Uh, so it was, it was a trade. Do we do we sell some of China to get some of India? That was a trade. We felt that, that was a good trade. Uh, and, and again, we have the rights in almost all our relationships uh, that if we do, when, when we do go into an IPO, we get a chance to roll up the entire entity. Mm. So, so, so even, even though we have sold our interest, uh, when we were global goes uh, public, we can roll up the entire China entity into WeWork. Uh, we were global. So so we okay. felt it was a win-win situation. Okay, I'm, I'm going to come back to going public in a bit. But uh, but since since this trade is being done between India and China, let me get Karan into the conversation. So Karan, uh, you know, uh, the 100 million that's come your way, I would imagine that uh, uh, you're going to have to put it to work and, and, and good work at that. So uh, what's the story looking like as far as India is concerned, given the fact that we're in the midst of... Uh, fairly aggressive uh, unlock at this point in time. Uh, how is business looking? Yeah, um, firstly, thank you for having me. And uh, it's good to always connect with you, Shireen. Um, you know, just going off what Sandeep said, and, and I think India is a good testament of how this model can work, right? For the first three, four months of this year, we were actually profitable at an EBITDA level. Hmm. Uh, and then COVID, uh, you know, obviously impacted it and has pushed it 
out to early next year. So what we've been able to do is, is very similar uh, to what we're doing globally is to, you know, look at the cost structure and be able to cut out a lot of that fat so that, mm. um, you know, we're able to get, um, you know, to that point as soon as possible. Um, we're also, you know, looking at a reorg of the of the existing, you know, portfolio when it comes, from, uh, comes to a real estate perspective. Mm -hmm. What yeah. interestingly we have seen in India is the, you know, uh, demand from large occupiers, um, you know, wanting sort of flex space or space on demand almost, um, you know, where they don't need to sort of manage the operations and they um, don't need to spend any more money on fitting out their space. I think India has, you know, continues to be a market where, you know, hiring continues. It's the outsourcing capital of the world. And um, even the large MNCs continue to, you know, probably retract employees in other parts of the world, but actually keep increasing in India. Um, and I think that's where, you know, WeWork comes in. Uh, and in the post-COVID world, when we can offer flexibility, mm -hmm. uh, when we can offer office space all over the country, uh, you know, uh, and all over cities where people don't have to commute uh, to a central HQ location, um, this is what, you know, a lot of large MNCs are now coming to us and speaking to us about is how can I consolidate my portfolio across the country all into WeWork? How do I get rid of like some of my fixed costs that I'm holding from a lease yeah. perspective? make it variable um, and also how do I give my employees you know the ability to leave their homes mm. that are small that are you know not uh, equipped with uh, high-speed internet or the infrastructure to work over many months uh, you know at home how can I give them the infrastructure of you know the we work offices whenever they need it yeah. and I think that that we are looking to, you know, roll out now, which is the all-access on-demand product. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, in a post-COVID world, like you said, as India starts to unlock, um, we see that the flexible workspace providers, and especially us, where the large footprint and, you know, um, uh, spanning across the entire country will actually benefit hugely um, from this mindset change that all companies are having, um, you know, right now across the world. Uh, Karan, just, just a, a little more detail and colour on the India plan. What are you going to do with the 100 million that Sandeep has uh, sent your way? Uh, secondly, you know, in terms of expansion, you've got, what, about six cities currently, 40,000 members. What's the outlook looking like from here on? So, you know, from a growth perspective, we are using this as an opportunity to actually try to, you know, explore and lock in uh, an asset-like model for, you know, future expansion where we're seeing a lot of, um, you know, landlords especially who have this vacant space coming up uh, and, you know, want you know, this operator model. So from a cash perspective, to be honest, right now, we're trying to keep as much of it with us as possible and not actually spend uh, a lot of that cash. In fact, you know, trying to cut down costs a little bit more. What we did do with that capital, a lot of it actually went, uh, you know, to pay a lot of our partners and vendors that have helped us over our growth over the last three years and we were able to give them liquidity in a time where you know they were struggling a lot uh, and I think that's gone a long way um, and we've you know built very strong relationships with these vendors uh, now for the future uh, and they're able to you know um, you know they're actually delivering some space for us currently so we do have some space rollouts in the next few months we actually have one building that's launching in the middle of next month uh, where we've signed a large uh, you know bank for almost 80 percent of that building uh, going to get delivered uh, in the middle of November. Um, we're also currently speaking to a few large enterprises for, you know, complete managed office uh, spaces. This is uh, a pretty large amount of space, you know, over 100,000 square foot of space. So I think we're going to look at a lot more back-to-back -back, uh, type of growth and not as much speculative growth as we, you know, were doing in the past. Or, in fact, no speculative growth for at least the next 12 months. Uh, <laughs> We actually hit the hit the point of profitability, which we which we see is pretty close. Uh, I would imagine that that's the mantra globally as well, isn't it, uh, Sandeep? No speculative growth. Back to uh, do the basics. Uh, uh, that's that's the plan. But what's the outlook in terms of collections at this point in time? Uh, in terms of occupancies as well. 
So uh, we did see, you know, some churn out of our smaller members, which is honestly the nature of our business. It was a month-to-month, -month, you know, flexible, flexible workspace providers. And when uh, when business is low, the whole idea was that you can actually stop, uh, you know, uh, pause your membership. So we've seen, you know, some of that, especially from the SMEs. But um, you know, for India, I think from the from the start of our journey, we've been heavily enter we've been very uh, heavy on an enterprise perspective right now about 65 to 67 percent of our portfolio is actually enterprise right. um, you know that continue to pay us on an, and these are largely mncs hmm. uh, you know, who continue to hold space with us in fact for a lot of them we continue to run their data servers and you know the it racks and uh, things are in the buildings and um, some of them actually have uh, you know employees coming and you know working even uh, through this time uh, so from a collection perspective we've actually collected almost 97 percent uh, you know of our, of our uh, membership fee since the time of law um, okay. uh, there has been some delay but uh, I think we've also worked with our members as partners to try to give them you know some concessions to yeah. help ease out the cash flow for the short term so that we get the benefit in the long term. Right, that, that, that renegotiation is something that we are seeing. But Sandeep, let me, let me talk to you about uh, why you believe that COVID is actually going to be uh, a, 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 a sort of uh, a lever for WeWork, uh, so to speak, because uh, you talked about de-densifying, you talked about flexible workspaces. Uh, are there specific sectors that you believe this model is going to work better for, whether it's hub and spoke uh, or the, the, the new products that you hope to launch? Uh, where do you believe that this is going to find most traction? You know, let me just uh, first, uh, you know, just uh, enhance on what something Karan said and what we see. This work from home phenomena mm. is actually mm. very good for places like India. Uh, and the reason for that is, you know, if you're going to not be in Mountain View or not be in uh, the East Bay Area, the Bay Area, you know, in, in California, and you're going to work from a, a spoke somewhere else in Portland, Oregon or Denver, uh, you might as, might as well work for Mumbai, right? So. So this is actually going to be very good for uh, for uh, for the India business. My my view is because it actually will prove the thesis that you can work from anywhere. So we, you know, our confidence level, you know, as we look now at the, the demand from MNCs in India uh, and how they see it uh, will come to play. And of course, you know, uh, India has a very advantageous cost structure, uh, and so teaching this has taught us a lot. Now take that one step further. That then on the state side says you don't need these mega headquarters. You need uh, collaboration hubs and you need spokes. Uh, and so when you go to collaboration hubs, uh, that could be owned and operated by companies. But very often the spokes, uh, you know, uh, are going to be held by flexible space providers. Again, we have about 800 locations globally in 140 cities. So we have a you know, clear advantage of mm. being that global player. And the all access permit allows us, you know, it's a, you know, it's this black card that we call how we digitize our real estate. Uh, it gives me access to all 800 locations globally, uh, and we're able to provide that all access to a member. So a person, you know, from London traveling to Berlin, uh, you know, in the olden days may have gone into a Starbucks uh, to work between meetings. Uh, today, with the COVID environment, with Starbucks being where you can't really be inside in many locations, mm. you can be outside. Uh, you know, my sort of in joke, I usually say, uh, come to come to WeWork, you pay for space and you get your lattes for free. Uh, <laughs> but it's not in jest, but it's uh, it's become more factual than we can imagine. So, you know, so we see that we see mm. the health sciences, uh, you know, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, COVID has now provided that ability for health sciences to be a big part of the growth. Uh, that is an industry that's growing and we're poised to grow with it. And we have been growing with it for a fortune uh, you know, 10 company, you know, we've been the exclusive provider hmm. for space globally. Um, we also pivoted to the to the uh, to the education sector, hmm. uh, you know, where because of online education, uh, universities uh, in, in the United States have taken space from us in China in, in Seoul in London, uh, where they can they, they can provide that collegial environment on hmm. campus in the States, but they can at least bring these students together uh, so they can have the sort of online education, but at least have some level of camaraderie. Uh, and we pivoted there. 
So the, the key to WeWork is, you know, if you think about it, we are a flexible space provider. Mm -hmm. right? We went flexible office to flexible space. Uh, and, 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 and so, so we're able to, to pivot uh, because of the flexibility of, our, uh, of the way we built our spaces, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, so Sandeep, uh, you know, let me then ask you about uh, the IPO plans as well as the cleanup mission that you're currently on. You spoke a little bit about that, but, uh, you know, how much is done uh, and how much of your bandwidth gets taken up by all the sort of contractual obligations that have been violated, the back and forth on that front? I mean, where do things currently stand on the cleanup? I spend 90% of my time selling. OK, it's all about selling. It's lease, lease, lease. That's that's the name of the game. As 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 Karan said, you know, we're all about profitable growth at this stage of the game. Uh, and and effectively, we've all built out our portfolios fairly well. And at times, you know, it was, uh, you, you know, you grew for growth's sake. Uh, so so it is time now to make sure that we get our occupancies up and we get our profitability. So I, I spend most of my time streamlining the organization. And quite honestly, that noise that you hear has, it doesn't involve WeWork at all. Uh, it is uh, it is a non-WeWork issue, uh, and so we fo we are very focused on our on our core business. Uh, uh, you know, and this is not my first time at the rodeo, so <laughs> hopefully this one I can I can ride into the sunset. Okay, well, uh, uh, the sunset is going to be a, a distance away, Sandeep. Uh, uh, not just yet, but uh, but on that, you know, do you do you feel confident, given where you are, that you will be able to uh, to turn a profitable venture, uh, uh, you know, uh, at some point next year? That's that's the outlook that you uh, held out. That's the outlook that the chairman held out as well. Yes, we we feel, uh, you know, you know, again, uh, we feel very fairly confident that. Uh, you know, you know, next year, uh, you know, you know, we would be profitable. Uh, all indications right now, based upon our revenue backlog, based upon the pipeline that we see, um, uh, you know, we we, uh, uh, we 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 see a path uh, to profitability. And resurrecting the aborted IPO. You know, I I only want to turn profitable first, right? So let's take one step at a time. Uh, let's show that profitability, and then we'll see where we where we go. All right, uh, Sandeep and Karan, uh, thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Appreciate your time. Uh, uh, thanks for giving us color on what uh, business looks like and what the future holds. Appreciate you joining us here on Young Turks. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Young Turks from all of us here on the team. Goodbye, many thanks for watching.